Good evening and welcome to our online new member meeting. Today is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. Um, my name is Chris White and I'm privileged to serve as the director of bands at Hickory Ridge High School. And with me tonight are the directors from Hickory Ridge Middle School, Mr. Stevens and Mr. Rivero. Gentlemen, hello and welcome. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you guys for being with us tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, before we get going, first thing we want to do is uh, just say to everybody that we're thinking about you and uh, we miss you terribly. Uh, we hope you are well and healthy and that your families are, are the same and um, we've got you in our thoughts and our prayers. Uh, we miss making music with you every day. We miss seeing you every day. We miss uh, laughing at corny jokes together and mostly you laughing at my corny jokes. But um, we just miss you and we, um, we hope you're well and we can't wait to get back to making music with you and to some sense of normalcy where we can see you every day. Um, so with that said, um, you know, thinking about next year is ex pretty exciting to me um, because if we can't make music now, thinking about making music in the fall is extremely exciting to me. So we're going to talk about a couple things tonight. So we're going to cover um, just an overview of what marching band is at the high school. Um, this is kind of a 40,000 you know, feet view. Uh, there's a lot of details that we can throw at you, but tonight we just want you to give, to get the, um, the, the overview of everything, kind of absorb that, and then we can throw some more specific information at you later. Um, always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us and we can answer any specific questions that you have, um, or hopefully we'll be able to answer them down the road. Uh, we're gonna talk about the summer and the fall calendar, what that looks like for the marching band. Um, we're talking about uniforms because, uh, believe it or not, that's a very common um, question that I get when we do these face-to-faces about our uniforms and what that entails. So we'll go over that a little bit. We're talking about uh, the forms and the fees that are associated with marching band, our finances and how we fundraise uh, to help pay for those fees, uh, and talking about our band booster organization, and then have a chance to, um, at the end, show you how to submit questions to us. All right, so let's jump right in. First of all, I always want to say um, there's many reasons for joining marching band, and the ones here are just a few of the many. Um, to be able to meet new friends before school starts, um, and to be a part of a wonderful band atmosphere, to receive guidance, positive guidance from our staff. Um, you know, students are in the spring training in the summer. We have more staff in front of our students than any other time, uh, much more than during our concert ensemble. So it's a great way to get positive reinforcement musically um, from, our, um, from our staff. Uh, and to learn, this is a big part, part to me, is to learn to achieve greatness just through self-discipline, uh, perseverance. Uh, some things don't always go the way we want it to, but it's how we recover from those and keep moving forward. Sense of teamwork, uh, we always say that band is about being something that's bigger than just you, being something that's bigger than um, just I. Uh, working through the we, and of course character building. Um, and then most members um, balance marching band with AP and honors classes. Many of them take several of those a year. Um, we have a ton of athletes, uh, clubs, uh, Boy Scouts and such uh, in the band, and then a lot of our, our students also maintain jobs. Um, to enjoy performing and bringing spirited energy to all home football games with over 100 talented musicians and color guard performers. I know many of you joined us for middle school night back in, um, I think it was October this past year, and that's, that was a great night performing with you guys um, in the stands and on the field for pregame and watching us perform at halftime. So we hope to, that you'll be able to do that with us full time next year, all of our games. And then, of course, enjoy traveling to away games, parades, and any other off-campus performance. And just to be a stronger player on your instruments by performing multiple styles of music, whether it be the music we perform in the, in the show or in the um, stands or any other time of multiple varieties of music. Guys, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, two, two points that I want to really drive home and talk to the eighth graders about. Um, even more importantly this year with how the end of this year is going to finish off, we don't know if we'll even be back in May. Um, there's a chance we're done. And if not, we might just get one or two weeks before the end of the school year is over. And then we, 
go off and you're going to be high schoolers. It's hard to think about that right now, but there's a good chance the next time you get in front of your friends and get in front of the, in, of the band, you're going to be in high school. Um, and one of the coolest things about joining marching band uh, specifically is that you get to show up for band camp and you get to meet friends and make <clears throat> connections with people um, way before school even starts. Uh, and I know by this time next this summer, it's going to be really important to start to reconnect. Um, one of the scariest things going off into high school is a new building, new teachers, new procedures, new friends, just everything's new, everything's wild. And you're used to being the big dog as eighth graders, and then you're going off to, into high school, and you're the freshman now. And I cannot tell you the memories and the friends that you will build being part of band camp. You show up to school the first day, and you've been in the building for weeks. You know friends that are seniors. You know where classes are. You know who to talk to. You, you've been there already because of band camp. It's so, so cool to kind of see that happen by the end of band camp. You don't even feel like a freshman because you have so many friends already and you've connected with so many people. The second really big point that I want to bring out that I always, I always talk about is if you take two freshmen and put them on the same plane and you start freshman band, by the end of the fall, those freshmen that are not in marching band will grow this much. And those freshmen that are in marching band will grow this much. People who are in marching band are just better musicians 99% of the time because you're going to practice more. You're going to learn different types of music. You're going to be more focused and more driven. And those two points um, on the page that you're looking at, the first one and the last, the last one, are so, so important uh, and are so true when it comes to doing marching band. Um, so really be thinking about that in different ways. Talk to people who are in marching band now. Um, a lot of you met them and started uh, Instagram and everything else like that. Um, talk to them and talk to them about how their freshman year was because they were able to do marching band. Um, it's really, really important. And it will make a huge difference in the, your freshman year of high school. Yeah, uh, with how this year could potentially end, end up finishing out, I can think of no better way to help transition into high school than joining this marching band and I can speak from personal experience about how when I transferred in I came from Jan Freeze and not a lot of people from Jan Freeze were zoned to Hickory Ridge High School so marching band I was starting off pretty much on a clean slate going into high school so it's kind of the same deal you know you go you walk in you meet people who are older more experienced you can ask them for advice uh, you know the building you know the people you have uh, friends who can ask these kinds of questions uh, about that transition to high school. And that's going to be really valuable, especially now um, with how everything's kind of shaking out. And so uh, I, I think I could not recommend it enough. Yeah, absolutely. Good point, guys. Thank you. All right. Next slide, maybe. There we go. There it is. <laughs> so what does marching band involve? And of course, uh, we can't go over um, everything uh, in one presentation, but just a, again, a high overview. Um, I always say that the Blue Regiment is one of the most recognized organizations on our campus. Um, it's also one of the most respected organizations on our campus because we have a history of success um, that's been proven year after year after year over the last 13 years. Um, more people will see an ensemble from our school at an athletic event or a parade than they will ever see on the, on the concert hall stage just because um, the nature of those events. So therefore, the Blue Regiment really is the musical ambassador of our school because we're out in front of so many people. Uh, and we take that responsibility um, you know, very, very important to us. Um, this year, in order to help families better navigate a busy schedule and to better balance marching band within the entire band program, we're gonna to transition to a non-competitive ensemble, which means basically we're gonna be able to do some things that we have not been able to do in years past uh, because of the demands of competition and the requirements of competition. 
Um, we'll talk more about that later. And there's also a presentation that I presented to the high school that will be shared out with you and available if you want to know some sort of the thought process to why that is. Um, but that's the format that we're going to use next year. So what that means is we'll still participate in our Cabarrus County Marching Band Preview, which all of the bands um, in our county participate in, uh, kind of a show and tell. And we'll host our Festival of Bands in September. And then aside from that, we won't compete, but we will still perform for all home football games and most away games and in the playoff games. And then, of course, we participate in the Harrisburg uh, July 4th Parade um, in July and the Concord Christmas Parade in November. So it's still a busy schedule, uh, still lots to do, but what this allows us to do is some take some rehearsal time out of the, out of the um, marching band schedule to allow the concert ensembles to grow a little bit in, in its place, um, to expand in some small ensemble opportunities, um, expand our jazz band opportunities, um, and just kind of balance time and, and all that stuff. We have so many busy families trying to navigate so many different activities with multiple children. Um, we, th we hope this is going to be a positive move, uh, move for us. Um, and it's going to look a lot like the pet band that you guys do for basketball. So being able to play multiple pieces together, uh, multiple styles of music, and that's been really successful um, for you at the middle school. And so we're really excited for you to bring that to us at the high school and help build that part of our ensemble. Guys, any, anything there? I'll just say this. If you enjoyed pet band, marching band will blow it out of the water. Times yeah. 100. It will be amazing. You'll, you'll absolutely, absolutely love it. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. And this is a great opportunity. If you didn't join Pet Band in eighth grade, this is an amazing opportunity to get that same experience, if not, you know, even a heightened level sure. of that experience in high school with the added benefits that we talked about that last slide about making those connections in that transition to high school. So absolutely. absolutely. We're, we had a great time with you guys uh, back in October and we're excited to try to do that every Friday night throughout the fall this year. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> when do we do all this? So this is kind of an overview here. And if you look at the top, the May and June dates, they say tentative because um, all of this depends on, oh, are we in school? Um, uh, and so I have the dates, well, I don't really have dates, but I have the activities listed here for you, um, what we would normally do. And obviously, if we're not back in the building or we're not able to have rehearsals, then we just adjust the schedule accordingly and keep moving forward. In a perfect world, if we get back to school in the middle of May, as they have said now, um, by the end of uh, May, we'll have spring training. What that looks like is uh, you just come over to the high school, um, we give you the marching instruments, if that applies to you, like marching French horns, mellophones, sousaphones for the tubas. We get all that squared away. Uh, we give you music. We start going over our warm-ups. We start going over our fight song, which you guys already know. Um, but we start putting all that together. Uh, we start looking at pet band music and show music and all kinds of stuff. So that's mostly music, just kind of easing us into it, getting the logistics out of the way with instruments and the scheduling and all of that. Um, in June, after graduation, we have a uh, mini camp. And mini camp is just a couple hours, three or four hours in the morning, a couple of days in June. And uh, we start to learn more about our marching fundamentals. So we sprint, spend spring training in May, uh, mostly learning music. And now we start learning the marching fundamentals that go with that. Because that leads us in the end of June to the beginning of July with the Harrisburg Parade. Um, obviously, <clears throat> when we get to the parade, we have to play and march. So we'll be learning both of those elements together in June. Uh, after July, after the Harrisburg Parade in July, uh, we take the rest of July off. It's a great time for vacations, uh, visiting. Hopefully, we'll be back to normal then so we can do all this stuff. Um, but that, that's a great time to, to do anything that you do out of town. When we get back to August, um, Bank Camp is the first two weeks of August runs from seven to three every day. It's an expanded time um, because we're getting closer to our first performances because football games, as you see there, begin, uh, the performances begin before school starts. We have two football games, two Friday nights, before the first day of school this year. So um, that band camp helps us prepare for those 
on-field performances where we start putting our fall production together, um, music and marching and color guard and percussion, and just putting the whole production together for those performances. Um, after school starts in August, we have rehearsals on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. We are able to drop a day this year, so we'll rehearse on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And um, in September, we will participate, like I said before, in the marching band preview, uh, Cabarrus County marching band preview, which is held at Mount Pleasant High School. And then we'll host our festival bands, continue to do our football games. October looks uh, similar with our football games. We'll do our middle school night, which you guys participated in this year. You will be in um, high school uniforms next year, welcoming um, your current seventh graders, your rising eighth graders, up to play with you next year. Then I can't wait for that night. That's always fun. And then in November, December, we do football playoffs at the end of the regular season and our parade. The um, Concord Parade is in November. <clears throat> All right. Um, so everyone says, wow, that's crazy. How do we manage this? So again, over on the left, you see all these are dependent upon school being back in regular session. Um, and I will say that um, if we know of conflicts in advance, I try very, very hard to work around every conflict that I can. Um, and being non-competitive this year actually helps us do that. It gives us more flexibility um, in being able to um, work around your schedule conflicts for your family. So it's just important before I go through any of this to say that if you look at this and you say, oh, I don't know that I can do this because I'm going to miss this and this and this, please don't count that out. Um, shoot me an email, call me, let's work through it and see if we can do it. If I can work around it, I certainly will, will do my best to do that. Um, obviously, if you're going to miss 90% of the rehearsals, that's going to be a tough sell for you to be able to get in and learn things. Um, so marching band may look a little different for you, but if you're only going to miss uh, you know, mini camp, I can, I can work around that. So don't let any of this throw you off. Um, May, June, and July, we call them mandatory. And mandatory is if you're in town and you can show up, we want you to be there. If you're in town and your choices are to come to marching band practice or to stay at home and watch TV, we want you to come to marching band practice practice um, because we don't want you to fall behind uh, we know this we want you to be able to ease into this and and the, the more you do it the easier it becomes so we just start early and we want you to be there at those rehearsals for spring training um, those would be in the afternoons after school so again if we're back in school regular time they would go like 4 30 to 6 or 4 30 to 6 30 after you get out of school um, June minicamp we already talked about the hours there uh, we talked about uh, the Harrisburg parade uh, talked a little bit about band camp there for those two weeks. Um, and then all the performances. Um, the thing I will say to you is um, the practices are easier to work around than the performances. And everyone always thinks, well, it's easy if one kid's missing because we have, there's 100 kids out there. So if one kid is missing, you're never going to miss them. And I will say to you that that's really the opposite of that. Of those 99 people depend on everyone being there because you get used to hearing them play. You get used to guiding to them in the formations. Um, so this is the, the performances are the most important things that we try to, to make sure that everyone is scheduled to be there to participate. Um, the Friday night football games. And then of course the marching band preview and the festival of bands. So if you have issues with those, then just, just let me know. We'll see what we can do. All right, and then obviously uh, football games, middle school night, all those are performances. So we say they're all mandatory because why would you sign up for marching band and not perform, right? Um, and then November, December, the parades and the football playoffs, the same thing. So basically, if you look the way it looks is everything August on, we really want you to be there for everything just so we can learn so you don't feel like if you miss something, you're behind and it's hard for you to catch up with only having two days of practices this week, this year. Uh, on Tuesday and Thursday, if you miss a Tuesday and it rains on Thursday, then it's hard for you to be able to feel comfortable in performance on a Friday night, not being in rehearsal all week. So it's just important to be able to be there. Guys, anything there? You got it. All right. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory, I think. All right. So again, I throw this in there because a lot of you um, may be curious about it now or I get this question a lot when we do this face-to-face uh, -face meeting. Uh, what about the uniform? Um, it's not something that's usually on my radar at this point in time, but it's something that you're likely um, 
thinking about. So let's throw it in there. So we have three different uniforms that we say. Um, and uniforms, you'll see over there on the left, uniforms change according to the activity and as the weather changes. So obviously, if it's warmer, we're going to let you wear shorts. If it's colder, we're going to let you wear something appropriate for the colder weather. Um, but the first one that you'll need to, to look at is the rehearsal uniform. So we do, we do um, well, uniforms for rehearsals. And what that looks like for spring training, for our mini camp, for summer rehearsals, band camp, and after school rehearsals, any rehearsal time until it gets colder, we wear a plain white t-shirt, no writing or image. We always say just, just buy the cheapest t-shirt that you can wear because you're going to get sweaty. They're going to get kind of gross. If you buy um, a pack of two, you have one for Tuesday and one for Thursday, and then you can wash it for the next week. Um, ladies, if you want to wear, or gentlemen, if you want to wear something under the t-shirt, um, another shirt or something else under them, if you're worried about wearing a white shirt, you're welcome to do that. Um, Athletic shorts that you can move in and are school appropriate. I know, I know, ladies, that's sometimes hard for you um, in terms of uh, short length, uh, length of shorts, um, but something that you can move in and that's appropriate. Um, athletic shoes, socks, sunglasses, and hats. The shoes are, and socks are so important. We do not want blisters. We don't roll rolled feet, hurt ankles, any of that thing. And sunglasses and hats and sunscreen. I should have put sunscreen on there. Um, just help you stay more comfortable. Obviously, marching band is an outside activity. If it's 95 degrees outside, we might not be out there all the time, but we will be out there in the sun, and um, so just, just come prepared. Um, as we go through our performances, our summer uniforms then are for our performances. So we have one uniform, the white shirts, for rehearsal. We have one for performances. Um, so the Harrisburg Parade and the early season football games, we ask everyone to wear khaki shorts, and you provide those, and we will pr provide you then with a Blue Regiment band shirt, and that shirt will be provided to you in the fee, so you won't have to pay extra for that, and then athletic shoes and socks, and I don't get real picky about colors of shoes or whatever, um, you know, just good supportive athletic shoes and white socks, and then khaki shorts and the band shirt, okay, and then um, once we get Further into the school year, we'll get into our full uniform. Obviously, we don't wear that until it gets a little uh, cooler or until we get to our formal performances like the Cabarrus County Marching Preview or our Festival of Bands. Um, so that uniform is provided for you. Um, and the marching shirt that you wore with the summer uniform, you wear under the marching band jacket. So that way we can remove the jacket uh, when it gets hot. We can remove the jacket before and after performance, and yet we're still uniformed. All right. Um, you'll need to wear black Catholic Catholic socks that you purchase, obviously, because they're your, your socks and you keep them. And also black marching uh, band shoes and guard shoes. Um, that's the only additional purchase aside from the band fee, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, that you keep those. So you purchase those. Um, and if you have them from years past or if you have an older sibling who may use them and you don't need to buy them, then you don't need to buy those. But uh, marching shoes are different. They're constructed different than tennis shoes. Um, so to, with, the, with the uniform, the full uniform, you purchase those as well. All right. Um, all right, so here's the part that I don't like to talk about because you know, um, I always say when I was growing up in, in high school band, you know, the, we don't, I, I, it was such a great experience for me and you know, it changed my life, obviously, that I don't ever want money to get in the way of anyone participating in band. Okay, so I say that right up front. So um, we are responsible for raising all the operating costs for the marching band ourselves. We don't receive uh, very much, uh, in well, no, nothing in terms of operating expenses or operating budget from the county. So everything that we pay for um, comes from what we raise. So everyone pays a $500 commitment fee. Um, I will say most everyone, if you have a sibling in the band, uh, the, the, the oldest child pays $500, and every sibling thereafter, as long as they're in the band, um, pays $250, all right, to try to help ease that for, for families. But you'll see here what that, what that covers, our music arrangement for our winds and our percussion, um, and our copyright for our fall productions. So we have to copyright the music when we arrange it. Uh, drill design and guard choreography, choreography for multiple shows, uh, guard uniforms and guard equipment, uh, flags and silks and poles and rifles and sabers, 
Uh, instructional staff, we have an uh, amazing instructional staff, um, one of the best that I've ever worked with, uh, about 10, 10 on staff for marching band, and uh, the fee goes to help support them. Uh, transportation, we pay for all of our buses and our drivers, even to away football games, um, and that adds up quickly. Uh, you're talking three or four buses, um, one event, um, that's pretty expensive. Uh, meals for some events, like, and for example, in, for the Cabarrus County Marching Band Preview, we will provide a lunch for you. So we'll come in and practice, we'll provide a lunch for you, and then we'll all get on the bus and we'll go. So that goes toward there. Um, anything that we use for the fall shows, props or other equipment, um, percussion equipment and electronics, new heads, uh, new mallets, new sticks, uh, anything involved with electronics. Um, as already mentioned, a show shirt for you. It um, involves, there's no rental fee or cost for the full uniform, um, but your fee does help us maintain it and with the cleaning. It helps us with instrument repair and cleaning, and right now we're finding that is really needed in our current scenario, right, to make for sure we can get those instruments cleaned and sanitized and, and to you and ready so that you feel good about playing those, and then after we use them, we, we, we feel good about playing them for next year. So that's a big one. It's definitely on our mind right now. Um, any awards for you, practice field maintenance, and all kinds of other things that are not listed there. Um, so you think that 500 is a lot of money, and it, and it is, I understand. Um, but even with every member paying that, it still does not cover the entire cost for marching bands. So we still end up fundraising on top of that. Um, so um, we ask that everyone pay that as a fair share. We call it a commitment form, but it's more like a fair share. Um, and that's, that, that's how we've been able to operate. Um, so with that in mind, there are ways that you can fundraise. Can you fundraise this? Yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, the commitment fee is not all due at one time. And I wanna just stop and pause right here when we're talking about fundraising. I want you to know that I am aware right now that given our current situation that families are hurting. Families are going to be hurting. Families are gonna, as we go through this, um, if there's you know time away from work or if there's lost revenue because of the situation going on. Uh, if ever there was a year that we we're going to work with every family that we can to make for sure that every family who wants to participate in marching band does, it's this year. So please, I don't want you to look at this and click off the presentation right now because uh, that's, a, that's on your mind. Um, I see you. I hear you. I, I definitely understand uh, we're asking you to send in money at a time when we're all me included, all the directors included, are unsure about you know what's going to happen next week. So all I ask is that you um, be as open and communicative as possible. Just let me know where you are. Talk to me. Uh, reach out to me through email, through phone. And uh, I don't want any of this to be a burden to your family, uh, your family, and you know their safety and their health, and all that is your priority right now. So I just want to say that up front. Um, with that being said, um, there are also ways that you can help to fundraise this. And we have several families who fundraise um, the entire cost of their commitment fee. They have several families who have multiple students, children in the band, who fundraise the cost of all of their fees um, and still fundraise for trips. So uh, this summer, there are immediate um, openings for working at PNC Arena, uh, the band boosters, uh, the parents, uh, for only for parents, not for students, but there are uh, openings there selling concessions and, and beverages uh, at PNC Arena. And if you're interested in that, um, reach out to me and I'll get you in contact. On the very last slide, uh, there's some contact information for our fundraising people and for our booster president and our treasurer. And um, we can get you set up for those. Obviously the festival bands, is a huge uh, resource for us, uh, for, for the band. We host a mattress sale, we do trivia night, and then we do various other fundraising events throughout the year based on your, your desires, your needs, what's coming up, what you still need. Uh, so we're always fundraising, we're always trying to help ease that burden of out-of-pocket costs for our families. Um, and especially now with, with current world events going on, um, we just want you to know that we have these opportunities in place and we will work with you any way we can. All right. If you have questions about that, please just reach out to me. All right. So now what? You've got this far in the presentation and you're, you're on board. You think, okay, I want to give this a try. What do I do? 
Uh, the link at the top of the form here is um, an online uh, Google document commitment form sign up. So sometimes we do them by, by, by paper. This year we're going to do everything electronically, of course. Um, don't worry about copying this down right now. I know that's a weird link to copy down. We'll, we'll send an email out to you with this presentation and also a link to the commitment form. So you can just click right on it from the, from the email and go right there. I just included it here so you would know what it would look like when it came out to you. Um, what you need to do is uh, complete the, the um, online commitment form and complete it with signatures. Signatures meaning uh, you're just going to click a box that says you've read the contract. All right, so it says commitment form, but it really is a contract. So I'll tell you what we're responsible for, what you're responsible for, and how we proceed. If you can turn that in by April 9th, we would appreciate that. Um, the first deposit is also due on April the 9th, but obviously, um, in a perfect world, we would have been able to get this information to you sooner, but with school closing pretty unexpectedly, or pretty quickly, um, this has kind of delayed us. So if that April 9th is an issue for you to return, um, to return that commitment form, just let me know. And again, going back to the uncertainty we talked about a minute ago, the important thing for me is that I get your commitment form online by April 9th. The rest of the money, the financial piece of it, we can work on together later if that's an issue. Um, you can mail the first deposit. There will be a, um, there's a, the Bamboosters have a PO box and uh, I will include that uh, address on the commitment form. All right, so don't worry about where to mail that. That'll be included on the commitment form. All you have to do is just copy it off of there and send it in. Um, and then attend the published rehearsals and commit to getting better and being better as a team as the season progressive, progresses. Um, published rehearsals, I say published because I don't really know when those are going to be. <laughs> so we're at the mercy of school opening um, and where this, how this all plays out. So just what it's important that you return the commitment form to me by April the 9th. That way I can harvest your email addresses, your contact information uh, from those so that I can send you, make sure that you're receiving those information uh, emails and those that pieces about our um, published rehearsals. All right. Um, on the commitment form, you're going to find the dates that are listed there below. So the first deposit um, is due, you'll mail that in um, by April the 9th if you're able to. And then they're the same way. There's 125 deposit due each month after that. April 9, May 12th, June 12th, and July 3rd. Uh, July 3rd is the date because we have a July 4th parade. So that, and then we take the break off. So that's usually the, the break, April, May, June, July, so that it's paid for before we go into the season. Obviously, if you're going to spend the summer fundraising at PNC or any other venue, Please just let us know that there will not be any hassle or we won't be chasing you down uh, as long as we know exactly what's going on. Um, and then, then hopefully um, we can just work together to get, to get those fees where they're comfortable for you. Okay. Um, and then here's how you get questions to me. Um, so you can see, I'll move this over. Hi, Mr. Stevens. I'm going to be back up. Um, there's my email address down here on the bottom, Christopher.White. I can bear us. I go by Chris, but my email address is Christopher.White. Um, our band booster president is Cami Comley. This is her email in case you want to reach out to her about um, boosters and how we get involved. And then um, Teresa Alexander is our current band booster treasurer. She will be um, sending information to you about fees and dues and all those things. I list her here so that you'll be able to be on the lookout for her. Um, address if you know uh, you're not used to seeing that pop up in your email box um, and then Kent Shuford is our band booster fundraising chair and he is currently um, uh, getting together the the workforce for the PNC concerts this summer um, also I will say that we have a band Facebook page which I think you guys have uh, recently received information about um, it's Hickory Ridge bands I know a lot of people don't use Facebook for social media and that's fine um, I would encourage you, if you don't use it for social media, just to join the group. Uh, a lot of times we just post information out there. Uh, a lot of parents will post questions, ask questions, and get replies um, from staff or other parents. Um, it's great for other parents to, to or, or to receive responses from other parents um, because they're feeling the same thing that you're feeling right now. So it's just a great way to communicate. Um, and it's a closed group, so you just send me a request to join, 
and I can um, approve you or Mr. Stevens, Mr. Rivero can approve you. Um, and then you're in the group and, and that's all, that's all it is. You just kind of watch the thread go by, but we'll post information there. And it's usually the fastest way that we have uh, to get information to you. And then obviously through email and, um, and on my class website. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the end. I hope that you will uh, be a part guys. You have anything else here and wrap up that you want to add? I'll just say there's not many people, if any, that look back and say they wish they uh, quit playing an instrument. There's a lot of people look back in their lives and say, man, I wish I never quit. Uh, this is one of those opportunities to really take your music to the next level. Um, and I'm really sorry that we're not there with you right now face to face to talk to you about this and answer questions and things like that. So please reach out. Um, you guys have my Google phone number. You have um, our emails address. Contact us if you have questions um, and know that this decision will change your life for the better. I really do believe that. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you guys uh, in a, hopefully in a few weeks. And if not, then at band camp. And I can't believe I'm saying it like that, but I want to see you guys at band camp. Make sure you're there. Yes, it's, it, w it would be an awesome experience. And uh, like Mr. Stevens said, um, a lot of people look back and say, man, I wish I would have done that. This is your opportunity to, to, to jump on that. And uh, I don't think that's something that you would regret. Um, I might be a little biased because I went through the program, but I don't feel like I am. I did marching band eight years. I did four years in high school, four years in college. And it was some of the best experiences uh, of my life. Uh, and I wouldn't, I don't say that lightly. So um, even if you're on the, on the fence about it, I would just go ahead and take the plunge. And I promise you uh, it's going to be worth it. And, and I'll add one more thing. Uh, something that a lot of uh, freshmen decide to do is not do marching band their freshman year so they can get used to high school and then take it in 10th grade. Um, and every 10th grader that I know that did that regrets it. Um, they're just one year behind and they watch their friends and the other musicians make memories and music and have so much fun for an entire year. And then they realize, hey, freshman year, I could have, I could have done both. Um, high school is harder than middle school. Of course it is. But I'm telling you right now, the support and the discipline and the things you will learn by being a part of the marching band are gonna help you be more successful in high school anyways. So do both. You absolutely can do both. Um, and I promise you won't regret it. I, I had time to do marching band. I had a job. I balanced AP classes and honors classes when I went through this. And I promise you it is doable and it is worth it. And I, I learned so much about time management just through all of that. And it's, it's, it, I mean, I can't say anything. I can't speak more praises onto it, but it, it really taught me a lot of the things that I still use in my daily life today. Mr. Rivera, I think you've, uh, you've turned out pretty good. So those, those <laughs> lessons, I, I feel pretty good about it because uh, watching I, I think, you has been a pleasure. One of my pleasures um, to watch you go through your career um, in college out. and now into teaching. Um, so I just, you know, in wrapping up, I just want to um, plead to you to give this a try. Uh, I'm, not pleading with you to do this because I'm worried about the size of the band or whatever, but I feel like, um, you know, band is a family and, um, it starts here. You will have more experiences together, um, through marching band than you will ever through a class band where we come in and sit for an hour and a half and leave. It's just, we spend more time together. We're a different setting. Um, it's a little bit more relaxed, um, in the stands or on a, on a activity bus going to a game or on the field. Um, this is a whole different atmosphere to expand your playing and your learning and your performing. Um, and I want you to know that I'm committed at the high school. The reason I love working with Mr. Stevens, Mr. Rivera so much is because um, they're about, they're about building relationships with students and teaching music and teaching life skills. And that is what I'm all about at the high school. We work so well together because I think we're on the same page about what we have our hopes for you and our desires for how you progress and what your music education looks like and what your exposure to music at the high school or the middle school looks like. Um, and we really look, work hard to call this Hickory Ridge bands. You know, you come in in sixth grade, you leave in the 12th grade and uh, we want you to get a great experience 
through every level. So I'm committed to, to that end. I'm committed to building on the experiences that you've had in the middle school. Um, that have been the, all the successes that you've had uh, to help continue you b to be successful at the high school level. Um, and I really truly believe that marching band is a huge key for you to be successful and your transition to high school and your transition to playing and performing um, at the high school level. So we hope you'll give it a try. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me there at my email address. Obviously, we wish we could do this face to face in person. Um, and so we hope that you'll forgive us for this, this kind of a backup plan B here. Um, but I would still love to hear from you. I know you probably have questions. Uh, reach out to me there, email. Um, I will be happy to um, email you back as quickly as I can. Um, otherwise, um, we hope that you will join us and um, the, just download, look for those emails to come out to you and um, go through and commit the um, commitment form by April the 9th. And then we'll receive, you'll receive more information from us after we get that form in from you. All right. Thank you guys for being here with me tonight. I appreciate you yeah. uh, giving up your time to come out and record this with us. Bye. Bye. See stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. All right. See you. Thank you very much.